I'm Chris Bradley with your Weather Geek Report. We're tracking inconvenient weather for your Tuesday morning. Showers coming down for that morning drive. That could slow you down. And the potential for a severe weather outbreak across the plains down to Texas. We're going to take a very close, detailed look at the severe weather parameters. But let's get you caught up first on showers and storms to our north. Those will be approaching the area after 3 a.m. This is the HRRR model, by the way. Let me take you a little further along here and show you how things are going to be looking as we head towards 5 a.m. Showers and even a few thunderstorms will be moving into central Ohio. And here's why I'm a little concerned that even a little rain here could slow things down for that drive into work and school for a Tuesday. As we continue on towards 7 a.m., a lot of this shifting south of Columbus, it will weaken. There could be storms redeveloping, though, later in the day. And if there's enough clearing, one or two of those storms could get up to severe limits, but it's going to be a close call. Looks like just a marginal risk for severe weather there. But it's a different story back here to the west, where we do have a moderate risk of severe weather across Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, right down to the Texas border. Now, Texas, uh, you are under an enhanced risk for severe weather, and the slight risk extends all the way down uh, to the Mexico border. This means that there's going to be a number of severe storms capable of producing very large hail, perhaps two inches in diameter or greater. And right now, there's about a 45% chance for tornadoes to break out here across Oklahoma, Kansas, and Nebraska uh, within a 25-mile radius. That just gives you an idea of the magnitude of the storms we're going to be talking about. So let's dive in here and take a look at what's going on. We have an upper level low pressure system that's moving across the Rockies in Colorado. You see all the winds here bringing up very warm, moist air out ahead of the front. And then behind it, we have much drier and cooler air. And this is what we call a dry line that's setting up here, uh, very dry air clashing with the humid air causes these storms to quickly rise and towering cumulonimbus clouds will produce that hail and then with all the wind involved we're going to get rotation with these storms as well so here we are uh, looking at the dew points and uh, i showed the dew points on the weather here almost every night when i'm not showing wind chill or heat index i'm showing dew points and there are probably some consultants if you will who would say ah people don't understand what dew points are I really try to explain it to you. This is probably one of the best tools in measuring what's going on in the atmosphere. Because you can see right here, we're looking at dew points that are up over 70 degrees across Oklahoma, Texas. And this tells you right here that the atmosphere is, you know, soupy and certainly capable of uh, having a lot of instability particularly when you get a front, and in this case, a dry line. That dry line, by the way, you see behind it, the uh, very humid air, how quickly it falls back off. And so this right here is your dry line that uh, extends right through Kansas, right through Oklahoma, down into Texas. All right, that's one parameter we look at. We have several other tools. One that you'll hear me talk about a lot here, the convective available potential energy, or what's referred to as the CAPE. All right, this is really a measurement of how much fuel does the atmosphere have to work with, and it's measured in what's called joules per kilogram. And right over here, you can see we've got numbers listed here, give you an idea this goes you know this could get in some cases as high as five to six thousand and it drops all the way down to zero in ohio i look for anything over about 1500 if you get over this limit and up you have the potential for severe weather well out west you're talking about values that are much much higher in fact i'm looking here at readings that are almost up to 5,500 joules per kilogram and it's right back in this area right here so again the area where we saw the very high dew points also where we see that dry line coming in so there's a lot of fuel for these storms to work with now let's talk about the threat for tornadoes Again, I mentioned that statistic that there could be a tornado, you know, in any given direction, 25 miles from where you are um, in this area where we have the moderate risk. Right up here is an area of concern 
And this is right up at the Nebraska-Kansas line. Very high number on the uh, significant tornado parameter. Basically, anything over a two is significant. If it gets up over five, that's pretty rare. Well, the computer models are printing out an 8.7. That just gives you an idea of just how significant or how high this is. Again, that's one area of threat across Kansas and Nebraska. And then we have another that's located right here across northern Texas through Oklahoma City. So basically from Dallas, Fort Worth, up to Oklahoma City. And in this area right here, again, we're looking at a very high number, basically anywhere in this area here. Um, the highest is a nine, which is right down there at the Oklahoma line. Again, very, very high uh, parameter number. One other thing we can look at is the supercell composite. Uh, we're getting all kinds of technical on you here, but this tells me supercells are possible from Oklahoma into northern Texas and potentially uh, could produce hail that's two inches in diameter, and that could certainly do a lot of damage. So we're going to be watching this very closely. There are a number of weather spotters, storm chasers from Ohio that are driving down this way and uh, we're going to be sharing some of their pictures and even some of their streaming video with you. Stay with us. I'll have much more in your Weather Geek report as we go through the day Tuesday and, of course, updates throughout the day here on 10TV, 10TV.com, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. I've got my own YouTube channel as well.